Hey everybody, Morgan here. So we are in the first lecture outline for Honors Chemistry, Unit 1, and we're on page number 7, and we're talking about density today. And I think it's important to point out that density isn't the single most important thing that you're going to learn this year, but density is a wonderful tool for us to teach the problem-solving skills that we're trying to convey to you with this unit. So we just happen to choose it because it's a great tool for doing that, okay? So what is density? Density is mass per unit volume. Okay, that means how much stuff is in a given volume. A lot of people confuse density for weight, and that is not true, okay? It's the amount of stuff in every specific volume that we make reference to. Now, I would at this point advise you to actually go and watch one of the other YouTube videos I have, which is called Density Demonstrations. I will put the link for that down in the comments section, okay? So how do we calculate density? The formula is density equals mass divided by volume. And just because I like to be a little picky about these things, it is a lowercase d, it is a lowercase m, and it is a capital V, okay? So if that's the formula, we can also say that mass is equal to density times volume, and volume equals mass divided by density. I don't want you to go and start memorizing these. You can solve for them algebraically. You've learned algebra, you passed your algebra class, let's use that skill now, okay? So, a very classic brain teaser, which is heavier, a pound of feathers or a pound of lead. They both have a weight of one pound, neither is heavier. The difference is the lead is denser, which means that it doesn't take up as much volume as the pound of feathers. A pound of feathers might be the size, you know, of a bedroom pillow, whereas a pound of lead is probably not much bigger than your fist, okay? There is one and only one value of density that I expect you to know and that is the density of water, 1.00 grams per milliliter, or you could say it as 1.00 grams per centimeter cubed. Most of the time we would use milliliters because it's a liquid. And this is at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.00 atmospheres of pressure. Okay, which are pretty much just the standard conditions that we normally work under. Okay, I would like to remind you, just because we've put this here, that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed, sometimes abbreviated as a cc. Okay, and most of the time, centimeters cubed will be used for solids, and milliliters would be used for liquids. Okay, so from the demonstrations in that video, we see that things that float in water, okay, you float in water if your density is less than 1.00 grams per milliliter. And you sink if you're more dense than water, the density is greater than 1.00 grams per milliliter. And we can adjust a substance's volume to adjust its density. A steel block is not the same thing as a whole bunch of steel foil, okay? Now, can you make a block of steel float? The answer is yes. How about in a pool of mercury? <laughs> and that's because density is, or the, the density, okay, of the steel is less than the density of the mercury. Mercury is a very dense substance. 
13.59 grams per milliliter. Okay. The other thing you could do is you could take that block of steel, hammer it out into a large shape, kind of hollow it out, you know, kind of like making a boat, <laughs> so that its density is less than the equivalent volume of water, so that it ends up weighing less than the volume of water that it displaces and it's able to float. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of practice problems with this. That's the important part of it. So prepare yourselves for a couple of homeworks dealing with that. Okay, thanks for tuning in. This is Morgan, signing off.